Hi everybody, welcome back to Happy Little Diodes, where today we're going to be looking at this Spectrum Plus, which was lucky enough to be the next one on the pile to be repaired. I'm pretty sure this was an eBay purchase, but it came with a few other bits and bobs, and I threw this on the pile because it was in such a sorry state I couldn't face to repair it straight away. But every dog has its day, and by the time I'm finished with this guy, it'll be up and running for years to come. Luckily all the keys are still present, just the legs on the base are missing but that won't stop us repairing it and cleaning it up. And here it is, it's an issue 3, it doesn't look like any parts are missing which is good. We have a ULA ending in a 6 so if that's still working we're going to need to put a heatsink on it. There's been some funny business around these ROM jumpers, I'll need to fix them up. And I think the power circuit transistors have been replaced too. The CPU is socketed, so I assume that's been replaced at some point. I'm just going to plug this in with a current limiting power supply, so I'm going to take an AV cable and touch the centre of the jack to the composite input to the um, modulator and make sure that the outside of the jack is touching the casing of the modulator to give it a ground. And this is what I was faced with. It seems like a fairly straightforward failure mode. We've got red vertical lines which indicates a problem with memory, probably lower memory. The apparent interference you can see horizontally is just interference from my uh, cheap switching power supply. So these red lines, if you remember back to a video where we repaired this spectrum, we learned about the startup routine of the spectrum and the memory test, and the way in which the memory is filled for the test um, actually draws red vertical lines on the screen. And based on the pattern we saw on this machine, I think we have this case, which means the RAM chip highlighted one needs to be replaced. Now I'm not recommending you do this, this is bad practice, but I was feeling lazy so I'm going to piggyback a RAM chip, a new one, over the suspected RAM chip, making sure very carefully that all of the pins are touching because there are three voltage supplies to these chips and they get very unhappy if any of those voltage supplies are out and very briefly power it up and see what we get and there we go we got it right okay so that's the first job really is to replace that memory chip next up will be to see to this voltage regulator it's looking pretty sorry I'll either replace it and de-rust that bolt or just put a new switching regulator in I also want to take a look at these ROM jumpers on the right there they look uh, pretty sketchy and I'm going to be doing a DC-DC modification to the power circuit because it's an issue 3 so we'll be working around this area of the board and I'll touch these up when I get around to that. And the keyboard membrane, I gave it a quick test, is broken. You can see it's quite old. Uh, these things tend to just die so I'll put a brand new one in there. And these keys need cleaning so I will be taking all the keys off and giving them a bath in warm soapy water. Oh dear, I think the case is going to need a bath as well. This is probably the filthiest spectrum I've ever seen. And that will mean taking off all of these little plastic bits that sit behind the keys and cleaning them up as well, because I imagine the action of this keyboard is pretty poor, given its state. So, I did all of those things I just said. Here's our new regulator. I did decide to put a switching one in, in the end. I removed the old broken RAM chip. Uh, I just snipped all of the legs because it was easy and as I said I'm feeling lazy, socketed it and put the new one in, uh, cleaned up the edge connector, uh, that was looking particularly filthy so it's nice and shiny now, and recapped the whole board and did this DC-DC uh, modification to bring the power circuit up to the specification of an issue 4A, and popped a 100 microfarad capacitor in for a composite mod so I don't have to mess around holding that jack against the case again. Finally here's our heatsink on the ULA, thankfully this is a Spectrum Plus in a large case so I don't need to de-socket the ULA, I can just pop the heatsink straight on the top and if it does ever pop its clogs um, it'll be easy to replace. The case and the keys and all the plastic components have had a nice bath and as you can see they're looking a hell of a lot better. That being said the enter key is very uh, sticky as in mechanically it kind of just gets stuck down it can be hard to press I think that just happens with age maybe I'll replace the top half of this case eventually if it does annoy me too much we'll see how that goes but all in all I think this is looking in pretty good shape and I was testing it out by playing this game Dead Space uh, I think I managed to play it for an hour or so before the spectrum crashed dramatically and made a horrible buzzing noise and I realized it was extremely hot the current draw I finally checked was 0.8 amps 
Now, with a normal Speccy in its original condition, with a 7805 regulator in, I would expect it to be drawing about 0 0.6 amps. Oh, and there shouldn't be smoke coming out of it, which also happened. Here is a trace of the minus 5 supply to the lower RAM. That should be a flat minus 5 volts, but it's oscillating between minus 7 and minus 4.7. Now the component responsible for making sure this is a flat line of about minus 5 volts is this Xena diode, which I added as part of the DC-DC mod, which seems strange to me. This is a new component made by Vichy, which I wouldn't expect to fail, but it can happen. Now here it is in the R54 slot, and when I touch it, there's power applied now. Smoke is coming out of it. I was expecting it to feel hot when I touched it, but smoke came out, so I think it needs replacing. I did inspect it under the microscope, looking for cracks or any defects, just out of interest. Couldn't find any, but with a new one in, we're back up and running, and it runs cool. It actually draws 0.4 amps now, so half the current draw that we saw before. And that's about the end of the story for this machine. A couple of extra points though. Did you spot the odd upper memory chip? Well done if you did. I didn't spot that even while I was working on it, only at the end. Doesn't seem to be causing any problems though. Also, I've been live streaming my attempts to finish Manic Miner, and it's been a lot of fun with some helpful tips from you guys, so keep an eye out because I'll be doing that from time to time as a means to test the machines I've repaired and just as a bit of fun for the community. Now I've been playing with this ROM cartridge and I've been desperate for a diagnostics ROM for some time so I'm going to build my own programmer to program this EEPROM and hopefully get myself up and running with a diagnostic ROM and a few games on it for testing purposes as well. So keep an eye out for that video coming soon. Thank you all for watching. Stay safe, take care, bye bye.